All right, all right. I think I think we're back. It's been about two months. <laughs> I've been away, but I'm back. I, I did make videos to upload while I was gone, but I just took too much out of me and I couldn't edit and upload anything, so I didn't, which is okay because I'm back now and um, hopefully we'll have a good time and go through what's next on our topic. So I thought I would come in with some Edgar Casey Remedies for Women's Health, which again, I'm basing on the Edgar Casey Remedies book and handbook, Health Through Drugless Therapy, both which were written by people who apparently are, you know, like me, big um, fans of Edgar Casey's work. And as you know, I've sold all my Edgar Casey books via Etsy. They're all vintage except the two health books and I might have one or two kicking about but um, I mean if they've been uploaded they're pretty much gone. They went pretty fast. I'll upload mo more books for you for the Guru Grit book club. They're all uh, vintage esoteric and such books um, from my personal library that I've accumulated since high school. And if I add some, I'm going to add some new stuff for Halloween, actually, that I got at a used bookstore, which is so cool, you know, like Mysteries of the Unknown. I've got some of those. I've got about six of these. This is um, Mystic Places. I've got UFOs, ghost sightings, cool stuff like that. Okay, so another thing I'm going to introduce today, apart from Edgar Casey, is Essential Supplements for Women. Okay, this was published in, I believe, in 1980 eight by a health editor, an acupuncturist, and a health educator, award-winning, and a physician. And they've got really cool um, suggestions for supplements. So what I've done is I've tied in the works. I've tied in like Edgar Casey's suggestions with these because they're all natural. So once again, this is for entertainment purposes only. This is not medical advice. And you know me from my previous Edgar Casey videos, which I did mostly, um, that resonated with men regarding hair loss, baldness and such. If you have any sort of like thyroid issue, I did a video on acne as well. Anything to do with like th anything to do with anything, just please like go speak to your physician because Edgar Casey even says to do it because he recommends atomic iodine, which I know you can tell it's dated language, but um, definitely this is entertainment purposes only, okay? Um, so in any case, keep an eye out for the vintage books being posted. And if you'd like to support my work, you can do so by tipping me on PayPal, Etsy, or joining my Patreon. With that being said, to the people who uh, write wonderful things, thank you so much. And to the people who message me and are very snarky and say things like, this isn't all the information. You should have more information. Just bear in mind, I do this out of the goodness of my heart. I do it because I love sharing information. And this is the place for learning. It's Guru grit. Guru means to be heavy with experience or knowledge. Um, so I do it because I want to do it. I do it for free. No one pays me to do it. And so, um, you know, and in the occult, it's important not to spoon feed information. You have to figure something out yourself. So if I've given you all of the ingredients and you know anything about Edgar Casey, all of his cataloged work is free domain online. You can go on that website and just figure out the tiniest bit of information yourself. And I'm pretty sure I covered it pretty well. And if I didn't, it's because it wasn't in the actual books themselves. Okay. So back off. How about that? Moving on fertility. Let's discuss fertility. Okay. So interestingly, I'll start with Edgar Casey. So he mentions the effects of stress and psychology and hormonal balance that could affect fertility. Okay. Being over or underweight affects fertility. So he recommends things like uh, meditation, spiritual health, and the belief for your well-being, like actually believing that you're meant to be healthy and thriving and that your body should produce what you want, when you want it, when you need it, all that good stuff, okay? Castor oil packs, I put obvi because like really that's, um, he talks about that constantly. I think I have just a video dedicated to the use of castor oil packs, so that would be helpful. Now, from this book here, supplements recommended are vitamins E, a B complex, vitamin C, wheat germ oil, bioflavonoids, zinc, thyroid health, under the guidance of a physician, again, minerals and essential fatty acids, recommended borage oil, linseed, flaxseed, and evening primrose. Now, I've added flaxseed because I think it's a great um, omega-3 oil, especially for vegans and, uh, you know, if you don't want to consume fish oil, etc. And then I, I capitalized borage because when I did my acne video, I emphasized my love of borage oil and how wonderful borage oil is and how to find a really good quality borage oil that will be double the strength, double the effectiveness. So definitely look that video up. I will link it to the comments, okay, to the um, description below. Okay, more on fertility. So magnesium is stressed as a really important um, 
supplement. And the reason is that magnesium is essential for the body's production of estrogen and progesterone. All right. So if you have weak fingernails, muscle spasms, or you're easily agitated, you might be needing magnesium. You could be magnesium deficient. So here I've put magnesium helps in the ease of period cramps, okay, because it eases like leg cramps, you know, when you like run too much, or sometimes kids when they grow fast, they're like, they wake up in pain. So magnesium is really good for leg cramps, also for pregnancy, okay, leg cramps, people get them. So it's necessary in the human body's production of progesterone and estrogen, okay. So that's quite necessary in terms of fertility. And then cheap and easy to find, try it and see if it improves your overall well-being. I'm a big, big fan of magnesium. It's accessible, it's affordable, it's low risk general for overall health. Very, very cool. So give magnesium a shot. Okay. Now we get into pregnancy. We're going to do a little bit more of a spiritual territory because of Edgar Casey. So on pregnancy, as mentioned, emotional well-being is imperative. You have to bear in mind, you know, the type of work that he was into. He believes like everything stems from the energetic cause. So your mental thoughts, your emotions, your spiritual discipline, all these things like really, really um, factored into the result of something. So he suggests that mental duress in the mother affects the physical formation and health of the child while in utero. So he really encourages people to be as calm as they can while pregnant or wanting to conceive because he believes that this can actually affect the development of the physical child and of course it's emotional mental development onwards he also states that the this is interesting because i've never read this anywhere before but he mentions that the father has an impact on the fetus through his choice of attitude which is to me was like mind-blowing okay though this is yet to be formally proven casey explains and i quote there are also other influences on the unborn child that have not well not have not been well understood Influences that relate to what the mother thinks and feels and what the father chooses as his attitude during this period. Furthermore, so far, medicine has not yet recognized that even the father's state of mind can affect the infant. It hardly needs to be stated, I should say, that anxiety and stress cannot coexist with love and affection. So if a person is wanting to get pregnant and they're really stressed and they want something to love, those things do not coexist well. If you're pregnant and you're under duress, um, it's very hard for you to like bond with the idea of that pregnancy and so forth, okay? Previous video and sex in the spiritual path, okay? So I've mentioned that um, Casey is heavily pro-life. I I don't know how much I covered it in that video. I don't really remember, but I know that it's in the book, which I've now given to... uh, a client who is in Texas has not sent it to them for free. Um, so anyways, he gives remedies basically during pregnancy. If you, um, he said, if you, if you have the onset of some premature bleeding or you're leaking some kind of uh, amniotic fluid, he says gives remedy for preventing the loss of a pregnancy via premature bleeding or other symptoms, which may threaten a pregnancy through the use of castor oil packs. Okay. So that's something else to know. It's very, very brief. That's all it pretty much says. Just put them over your abdomen. So for someone who's like, you didn't say everything, that's literally like two sentences, okay? It's amazing I even caught it. How about that? You're welcome. (laughs) Symptoms of pregnancy, hemorrhoids, all right? Something like three quarters of the people in the world will have hemorrhoids at some point in their life. Some people have them chronically. They never really go away. People who sit too much, stand too much, truck drivers, operating room staff, um, post office workers, okay? Hemorrhoids, very, very common, all right? So castor oil packs, again, to the general area. He gives suggestions of stretches where you stand, you raise your arms above your head, and you bend over as far as you can. You do this about six times. You take a break. You do it again. You do it again. Okay? He says if you really want to challenge yourself, you do it whilst on your tippy toes. So physical activity is supposed to improve this. Um, Dietary changes, roughage, fiber, okay, all these obvious things. Full body massages. He's a really, actually... In this book, there's even like diagrams on how to give a full body massage. Like a lot of exercise, a lot of diagrams for exercises. He's really into getting massages and giving massages. Um, We obviously know the benefits of these things, but I'm not a massage person. I think I've only gotten one in my whole life. I was 18. Only because someone got it, um, got a gift card and uh, they didn't want to use it. And it was expiring that day. So I just went in lieu of them. 
but yeah, like I'm not a massage person. I should really get on that. So he explains full body massages actually will help with this. Obvious clonics, fume baths with witch hazel. Okay, so fume baths are like steam baths. So basically steaming up your shower, um, witch hazel, um, getting into a hot bath, as long as it's really steamy. Okay, but I found that to be... I found that to be quite an interesting one because I'd not heard that one before. I want to see if there's anything else. Um, I'm sure there's got to be. Oh, sea buckthorn oil. Sea buckthorn oil suppositories. They are like this sea buckthorn oil, like bright orange. It's actually a really good oil for acne sufferers as well. You can, um, I think you can ingest it, but it's, you, you use it um, like on your face, right? And I know these suppositories are, t are said to actually be able to heal tears, okay? So I remember having a Russian co-worker who was super into like natural modalities and like healing. And she just like knew everything about like every single herb ever. <laughs> she was very, very spiritual in a sense. And she said like it will heal tears. So uh, women who um, after delivery, they can insert them vaginally and they say that like it really, really helps with the stitches, with the healing, internal and external tears. They will like rub it everywhere, but they actually do sell them in some grocery stores, especially like Eastern European grocery stores. You can find them when they have like a little pharmaceutical section or like a natural um, tea and herbal, whatever section they have like supplements and things. If not, try like a health food store because they said to like heal tears. So they're uh, very, very, very effective, though they are said to be very messy because they're very oily and because of their color so just make sure you're like appropriately dressed when you use them so that you don't you know ruin your bed sheets and, and whatever clothes that you're wearing at the time so you do that through like preventative measures but see buckthorn oil suppositories and the oil itself if you can insert it that is supposed to work absolute wonders I was actually really curious because like it's such a common condition I remember googling um, what did people do in ancient times they did like heavy labor. Like I'm sure like, I mean, like women used to suffer prolapses, like working on farms, like being consistently pregnant for like over a decade and a half at a time. If they like lived to be 40 before dying of dysentery with their spouse, whatever. Right. Apparently they used to make like, um, I think in ancient Egypt, they used to make like, like honey balls or something like with honey, they would make like suppositories that you could insert to like help people with that and I thought that's actually very smart because honey is a healer we know this so now you know fun little historical fact morning sickness okay very common or just nausea in general so this book's really interesting and in the morning sickness portion they said that uh they know a lady who cured her morning sickness during her second pregnancy. Many years later, she discovered that a morning cup of miso soup not only eliminated nausea, but also improved her energy. Miso paste is made from fermented soybeans and is mixed with boiled water for nourishing broth. Okay, so it aids in digestion and contains lactobacillus bacteria. So another thing that you can do with that is, of course, then uh, consume really, really like natural yogurt because yogurt will be good for that as well. Okay, so miso soup, miso paste, chromium. You can I have chromium. Chromium supplements um, are supposed meant to be um, helpful as well. Here's the ones that I use. Okay, so uh, chromium is also good for um, how should I phrase this? Healthy glucose metabolism. Okay, supports the metabolization of carbohydrates. Okay, that's how I would put it. So very good. Um, teas, all right, spearmint, peppermint, and raspberry leaf tea, very popular choices for the well-being of the woman while she's pregnant. However, it says no black tea and uh, coffee. So too much caffeine in it. And then the coffee is ruled out. The reason being given is it's the cause of excess acidity, which will lead to, you know, imbalance of stomach acid, which will lead to nausea. Okay. Avoiding fatty or fried foods and sugary foods, white flour, processed foods to help with nausea as well. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. And then just before I say thank you and goodbye, let me just go through my little charming little cloth bookmark here. All right. Morning sickness, as we were saying, vitamin B6, 50 milligrams. Zinc is interesting. It says 25 milligrams of elemental zinc. Uh, zinc is a funny one. If somebody could help me, I'd really appreciate it. Zinc makes me violently nauseous, even if it's like in something, you know, sometimes you get like a supplement that's like, I don't know, whatever women's 
wonder or something. Okay. It's like mixed with a bunch of stuff in it. If there's even a trace amount of zinc, I just have to lie down and like do my Hail Marys. Like I can't take it. So if anyone knows how I can ingest, cause I'm zinc deficient, how can I ingest zinc without feeling super sick? I'd really appreciate it. But here it says it helps with nausea. For me, it's the opposite. Okay. Magnesium, 800 milligrams, phosphoric acid. Okay. Take it as directed on the package. Right. They go into some, um, heavier topics like toxemia, high blood pressure, edema, um, preeclampsia. Okay. But I'm going to leave that one out. It might be a bit niche unless people by request want it. I'm happy to go into that. Leg cramps, again, mag magnesium, calcium, potassium, folic acid. Um, and then general health. Okay. Uh, vitamin C whilst pregnant, multi-mineral should have iron, magnesium, calcium. Uh, multivitamin with at least 50 milligrams of B6 and folic acid. Okay. Another thing they mention is the result of sleeplessness during pregnancy for this very straightforward magnesium and potassium is recommended zinc and a general B complex or take some brewer's yeast. All right. Then last but not least, I just want to go over morning sickness. I did that one varicose veins, and hemorrhoids, calcium, 1,000 milligrams, magnesium, 500 milligrams, vitamin C, 1,000 milligrams, bioflavonoids, 300 milligrams, potassium, 99 milligrams, and vitamin E, okay? Stretch marks, they even give a little remedy for stretch marks, okay? Fish liver oil, so omega-3s, but I, I've recommended um, in the first or second slide there, flaxseed oil, linseed oil, all those could be used if, if you don't want to eat animal derivatives. Cocoa butter avocado oil, lanolin, and apply it to skin. Now, if you ask Edgar Casey, he would probably say beef tallow. Beef tallow, very, very popular moisturizer at the turn of the century, okay? Um, eating boiled eggs, also a good source of uh, protein recommended. So lots of options here. Now, if there's um, more people interested, I could keep going. I definitely want to do, you know, like PCOS, period cramps, um, contraception and thyroid health. Those things are very, very popular. And I found that like in North America increasing, not just with women, extremely common hormonal imbalances in men. I think too many endocrine disruptors, uh, in our food and in our environment these days. So people are wondering what they can do to protect their thyroids, to have balanced health, etc. So if you're interested in those topics, feel free to Email me, let me know what you have on request next at gurugritinfo at gmail.com. Request topics, ask for remedies or general questions where I can sift through Edgar Casey's work. And this book is pretty cool, but it's all about like women's health. So coming up next on the Guru Grit Book Club, we have female sexuality, followed by Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. And I have another book, Mars and Venus Together, also Together Forever by Dr. John Gray. Um, apart from that, I have a list of <laughs> questions that I've saved from the uh, TikTok lives which somebody asked of Katie so funnily said, please give logical dating advice. And I love that one. So we're going to do some logical, practical dating advice, especially for the marriage minded. I think that'd be very, very suitable. And then last but not least, um, my forever, you know, one of my favorites, Napoleon Hill. I have this wonderful vintage copy of the master key to riches. I just, I just don't make cool covers like this anymore. Just how fun is this? Uh, we're going to go over some, uh, Things that he and I love somebody who owned it before me the way that they underlined in perfect lines as though they used a ruler they probably did look at that in red ink it's just so cool I love it I love it I think it's awesome anyway so I hope I hope that they're prospering wherever they are and they're happy eternally and um, that we will read this together and prosper because rising tide raises all ships so thank you so much for watching and until next time I love you all very much bye bye <laughs>